Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to AC Aviation. Today we're going to be doing the explanation of how this Navigraph software works. So I've already talked about Navigraph and Simbrief before and I already did a video about Simbrief. This one's going to be about Navigraph. So Navigraph has desktop app and also iPad app. In this case we're in the iPad app and so let's go ahead and see how it works. So the first thing is that you see here a map. That's the most basic thing. You see here a lot of information, a lot of waypoints. That's more about navigation and all those things. For example, the white lines that you see here are called airways. The little triangles are waypoints and so on. The blue kind of, I don't know how to call them, are airports towered airports while the green ones are non-towered airports so that's more or less the map and will these big green lines are the first so you have New York Oceanic Fear here for example this is Santa Maria Oceanic Fear and so on first here we're gonna go from left to right at the top and from left to right at the bottom so let's start here you have your search so this is pre-intuitive yes you just search here for the waypoint for example I'm gonna search for the waypoint let me see if I remember a waypoint uh, I think there is one in Colombia called Geek Geek Poo yes and here it is so I search for it and it gives me the name, the coordinates, the type. In this case, it's a combined naval intersection and RNF set. It's in both high level and low level. Compulsory reporting, yes. And magnetic variation, yes. So it's a waypoint. For example, if I search KFLL, it brings me an airport here. And also control airspace, as you can see. So it's very, very good. But the nicer thing about this is the charts. When you go down here and click the airport, it starts loading all the charts. So first you have star, app, taxi, sit, and ref. Star stands for start and terminal arrival route, app to approach, taxi, standard instrument departure, and reference. So for the star, the approaches and the sits, you have all of them here. So for example, in the stars, we have this star, this arrival, it gives you the chart and all the other arrivals. Approach for runway once you're left, runway once you're right, and you click it, and there you have it. But the most important tool here is let's go back to start this little eye that's in the bottom part when you click this eye you can visualize all of them for runway once you're left runway once you're right runway to it left to it right so for example let's say you're flying from new york so the wind is let's say from the east so you're going to be landing via runway one zero left or right let's choose left so you click it and then you see well we're coming from new york so we are arriving from the north so you look at this map and you say, well, of course, we're not going to be using the Decal 5 arrival. We are probably going to be using this Fiesel 7 with transition here at Krenz, for example. So you just click it and it says that is the star Fiesel 7 transitioning at Krenz. You can tell it the transition at Fiesel, which is another waypoint, MLB, OMN. TRV, there are a lot, so we are choosing Krenz, and that's it, and it automatically gives you the associated chart right here in the top, so you click it, and that's it, you have your chart, you can also click this one to overlay it on the map, and so it's very cool, you can do the same with the approach, here, you select the runway and it gives you all the approaches. For taxi, you have, of course, some info. You have here the airport. These are all the nice, cool things that Navigraph gives. The same for the seats. 
you can have this it and reference usually are like things about noise or airspace but for example this airport doesn't have and you go to favorites in favorites you can select airports if there's an airport you ver you like a lot flying to well you can just select it let's here for example select for lateral so we're gonna close this again sorry let's see if we can manage to select for a letter to Hollywood well it's pretty difficult let's just do it the old way so we do this oops it, I, there is a point in which you select ah here it is you click the star and it's now favorite airport and you go to favorites and there is KFLL. Then you have flights. These flights or or your preset flights. How does it work? When you create a flight, you can create it manually, in which you select the origin airport right here, your destination airport, your flight name, your alternate airport, and if you click if you want to auto-generate the route with low airways or high airways. That means if you're flying above 18,000 feet or below 18,000 feet, you create then here, create flight, and that's it. But you can also import from Simbrief, that's the cool thing. When you import from Simbrief, you just enter your username. In this case, my one is November 737 Sierra Charlie, and it gives mine the latest Simbrief. So, in this case, the last one that I created was this one from KFLL to Kalax. So, I click Save Flight, and that's it. And then when I go back here, sorry, that's it. When I clicked save, it started loading. And what Simbrief gave us as kind of decoded things, now Navigraph makes it visualize it. And so here is your route. You can see that you have first the airport, the runway, then the departure, which is Thunder 4. And all the waypoints down the route. And at the end, again, the arrival, which is in this case Hollywood 1, the approach. So in this case, there's no approach. As you can see, it's just selected runway. So let's go ahead and select an approach. How do you do that? You click this little arrow here, and you click approaches. Let's visualize them first. So we are landing runway 25 left. It could be any of these ones, but we're selecting 25 left. And so, let's see if any of the approaches end where our route ends. So in this case, our route, uh, our route ends here. And as you can see, also, start there the ILS, the RNAV, Yankee, and the RNAV Zulu. So you go now to the approaches, and you can select one manually. So we're going to select the ILS, runway 25 left. And then if you close everything, you can see now that it, here it is. ILS runway 25 left at Zeavo. But there is one more tool that Navigraph has which is very 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 cool. Is this one. When you select an airport either from here or from here, you can do something which is called pin charts. When you pin charts, they keep in the bottom part of it so that you can access them easily. So in this case we are gonna pin the airport info. I will recommend pinning it, the parking gates, and our departure, which in this case is Thunder 4. So let's search for it, Thunder 4. And our arrival, we're going to also pin what we care about. So the Hollywood one, let's search for it. The approach, ILS runway 2, 5 left. Here it is and the airport info plus parking gates and as you can see when you close everything the charts keep here down and so you just click it and automatically access it you can scroll all the way down here to the left and also if you click in the airport it gives you it brings you again to this menu then you have more of, of kind of settings here you can select the map type 
like high in route, so higher width above 18,000 feet, low in route, and finally, which is very cool, a world map. Let's keep in high route. This little arrow that you can see I'm clicking right here is to use Navigraph with a more professional simulator. So it detects the position of your simulator and represents it in the map as a little arrow. In this case, it's not supported for x Mobile, so yeah, sad, but it works for more professional simulators. Then you have this night or sun, which turns into light mode or dark mode. And finally, your settings. So in this case, you select your account name, your sim brief username. If you want to do whatever you want, I fire or I cow disable movie max. No, that's more of kind of settings. And that's it. Well, you might be asking, is this so cool app with all kind of charts free? Well, it isn't. I have to tell you, it is not. It does cost a little bit, but it is really worth it. I have to tell you that I'm not promoting this. I'm not paid for doing this, but I just want to tell you that it's very cool and you should use it. So yeah, I I can tell you it's really worth it, actually. It's really worth it to pay the price. And you get all these official charts from Jeppesen. This Jeppesen company is the company that real airline pilots use. And most of these charts are the real ones that pilots use. Why the I know say I don't say always because as you can see here it has a date. So this one expired on the 29th of May of this year, 2020. So but this one is already expired, but as you can see, it's very very current. I mean it's just like what? One month, two months. And for example the one of for Lauderdale expired either actually what three third of April nineteen sorry twenty twenty third of April nineteen twenty what am I saying third of April twenty twenty that's kind of what three months let's see the parking gates it's in seven February well this one's quite old but as you can see it's they are very 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 good charts if anybody wants me to explain what what these charts contain and the information they give I think the most important ones are like kind of this ones which are more difficult and the ILS which I've always said is the more complex and crazy one so if anybody wants me to explain just write it down in the comments and everybody have a nice day stay home bye bye